Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. How's it been, Extreme IO? I, I saw that you announced some really exciting results, and yeah. Gartner have you well placed. So uh, tell uh, us about that. It's it's been magic, and obviously more magic for our customers, but but also magic for us. I think it's been really the fastest growing business in EMC's history. We think it's probably the fastest growing business in enterprise storage history. And it's really all about how we are transforming our customers' workloads and how we're really driving broad workload consolidation for the Agile data center. Excellent. Uh, we've also got with us uh, James Eason, who is manager of storage services at Bike to Health in Carolina. So, uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, and, David. Uh, how's it been with Extreme IO? Uh, to, to, to it's been a, a, a great ride for us in terms of not only performance, uh, which is where we began looking at it, but in terms of agility, some of the things that this technology has allowed us to do in terms of freeing up people's time, uh, particularly my staff's time, but then when I look out at the customer base, some of the things we've been able to do to bring healthcare decisions in and much faster have been amazing with this technology. Well, let's step back a little bit for a second, uh, James. Let's talk a little bit about Bison Health, uh, where Hospitals. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about the background. Okay, we're a health system located in eastern North Carolina. Uh, we serve 29 counties there, about one and a half million people. We've got nine hospitals and 95 plus clinics scattered across that geographic area. Uh, much of it rural, some of it not. We are uh, big. We have a big level one trauma center, which is where our data center is, and this is where we began a partnership with EMC years ago. Uh, to deliver our electronic health record, which is on Epic. And that was the, the first point that we were driving after to use Extreme IO was to solve a solution for us there to increase performance, give us better space, agility, then we wanted that space to be able to grow and take care. And, and the thing we were looking for was that dedupe and what it was going to do for me in terms of ability to scale. Right. So, and, and what were the applications that uh, you're running there? And what, where were the initial problems that okay. you uh, had? Uh, David, my first point was with the, what I'll call the Epic Clinical side, that where actually the patient yeah. data resides. Yeah. We addressed that first with our first extreme purchase. Uh, we immediately saw even more benefits than we could have imagined. And so our second purchase was for the Epic uh, reporting side, which is a totally, basically a whole separate infrastructure that you have to put in place. Those people have been on spinning disks since the, our original days of Epic, so you can imagine those customers uh, when they came live. I mean, I literally had people coming to me going, my report has to be broken. <laughs> because there's no way it can have completed in that amount of time. Uh, and, 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 and you, you missed some data Yeah, right. something right. happened. Loaded the data. <laughs> no way this can be right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and, and then you take those people and so heretofore, those guys, here's another thing for that, that set of people, they had no test system, literally. So when we did an upgrade, we had to take care of a conventional uh, upgrade on, on old hard disk technology. Well now with Extreme, you've got your old copy, we'd start doing snaps, upgrading those snaps. Imagine how happy they were with this last upgrade. They had three test copies they could play with that only cost me like 30 gig a piece. <laughs> that, those are the kind of things that have just you know been great for us. What was the original catalyst? You mentioned with your kind of first your first implementation. What was the catalyst to do that? Okay, that's a great story too. We had, we had budgeted for uh, a Vmax, and I was actually running ahead of schedule in terms of consumption. I was like, I'm not going to make it to when I wanted to get that Vmax. And now that I've looked at Extreme, I'm not sure it's the right play anymore. 
So I made a very passionate pitch to my CIO and said, the right thing for us to do this time, I believe, is to go newer technology, better technology, things that are going to make us or give us the ability to do, to do things we've never thought about. So we brought the first one for the Epic Clinicals, then we made a major purchase that allowed us to put the Epic Reporting and now other apps on as well. May I ask, when you pitch your CIO for the next set of Extreme IO expansion, how was that different from the first pitch? Uh, the first pitch was pretty impassioned of, we're going to run out of space if you don't get me something. <laughs> uh, the second pitch was more, uh, we had run through our testing, and so they, they had seen, uh, and we've been able to report all of the, the benefits, and, and particularly in terms of things like latency that never climbed regardless of the number of hours. And so it wasn't a very hard sell at that point to say, hey, we, we need to move totally in this direction. And she's pretty data driven. And when we showed her the data, she's like, absolutely, I agree with you. So, so what does this mean for your, your, your people that you're working, uh, that work for you and, and your other colleagues in other sections? What, what, does that mean, what does it mean to you in terms of bringing them along? And what does it mean to you in terms of organization? Are you organized the same or have you had, you had to change that? No, we're still organized the same, but, but what it did, I'll, I'll, it's a, you know, we take care of people in healthcare. And for me, it was a big deal to see what it could do for people. So if we talk about the people outside of IS, think about these people that were consuming those reports on that reporting side. We literally had a month in process that had two very critical reports that prior to extreme ran in excess of 41 hours each. 40, how many? One, 41. 41. Hours. They now run in 45 minutes. So think about a clinician now being able to make a decision two days faster. You know, I mean, to, to me. And I, that's a clinician report, that's not an accounting correct. report. Exactly. Right. So it's somebody trying to make a decision about how we staff how we change our patterns of care, all those kinds of things, they're able to get their hands on that data that much faster. From my guy's perspective, David, it's, it's been amazing. The things that we used to have to stay up at night and do, the things, the copies that we had to make that consume space, we used to have to worry about going to the boss and going, not real sure we can spend this money. I don't worry about that anymore. So, and why, why don't you have to worry about it? Well, it only consumes a very, a snap consumes nothing. So I'm not adding space, you know, in turn, and I'm not having to go and, and that's them. a separate copy, yeah. fully writable copy. That we they have, can... uh, in terms of Epic, David, we have 23 copies, 23 environments. So in 23. 23 that's copies. That's a big number. <laughs> and, and many Epic customers have a lot of that. So we didn't just put the production copy, we put test copies on there because of what it does for our people process with NIS. Uh, this last upgrade, they run you through a transparent upgrade process. All of those copies were done with Extreme IO. So my guys that used to have to stay up all kinds of nights and weekends were able to run these things, get them done in just a few hours. And when the app teams were finished, tearing that down and starting over again was a piece of cake on Extreme. Yeah. For many of, of our customer discussions, we we go into the discussion and their, their mindset is, how many copies can we fit and how many <laughs> copies can we afford? And then our goal is to pivot that discussion back to how many copies do you really want and how frequently do you want them? Because they're now free. It's really only the changed data that takes up any space. So, so going to 23 is, is, is a big deal and you could go to a lot more. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, David, here's a, here's a great example for you from the guy, we got, I got a new guy sitting next to me. He's our new director of analytics. He has a dream. Uh, instead of letting the doctors have access to that true reporting database, he wants to spin off a copy that, that can be their sandbox. It's very easy for us to do with Extreme once he chooses which data element. Well, it, here to fool, we were concerned about if a doc made a, you know, he thinks he's an expert at a SQL query, if he makes a mistake, what does he do to the reporting database? I give him his sandbox. If he blows it away with a snap with Extreme, I can have it back for him in no time. Right. It's a, uh, it's wild. A lot of people talking about benefits of flash and speed that it deploys. It's usually the the conversation is really focused on the applications. What you, what you are really talking about is this liberating thing that now you're picking up basically a bunch of man hours that you can deploy on other tasks that that here for you didn't have. With the, I, I have said people have asked me what what's your next challenge? What's the next thing? From my perspective, I really think our biggest challenge right now is how do we think differently? 
this this technology puts you in a place and, and it conquers the speed and space thing in minutes. I mean, you're done with that conversation right. in no time. Right, right. And so, next problem. Next problem, yeah. please. And so, and literally my guys are having to go, what process might we be able to make better? Right, right. By using this technology. We, we've changed it from a, you know, no, that's very expensive and we shouldn't to, why shouldn't we put everything there? Right, and, and this that's, is really. So, so the, and, and the CIOs behind that. Is yes. It? So the, the real, shift in belief that you can go to an all flash data center uh, what, what sort of time scale do you think that's going to be I, I think we're a good ways out there because we've got some legacy apps and some things we have to make decisions about of what go, what stays on traditional and what goes flash because I, I don't think we'll put everything legacy on flash for sure so we've got a few design things you know to talk about there but we're definitely moving in that direction in, in that direction yeah. so what what about Epic itself? Epic has been around for a long time. Um, what, what, are the, what, what advice would you give to Epic about how they could do things better or differently? Or is it, is it that you can just, the application is fine. Could, could, could they actually extend the application? Could they do things that they just couldn't do before? Um, I think they can from a perspective of, they, they are, uh, that application is very uh, dependent upon uh, read-write speeds for success, uh, so much so that uh, on older traditional storage you had to do a lot of definitions of a per spindle basis and how many RAID 10, how many RAID 5. Th this takes you out of that discussion. You don't I have to do, do it anymore. I've, I've, I've actually spent a lot of time with Epic in Wisconsin and um, you know, I think the the major got the gray hair to show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and you know, they're actually they're an extraordinary company and they've done some extraordinary things for their customers. but. Some of the feedback I bring from their customers, um, one, I think many customers now see this as the perfect time to re-platform. Many customers may be on legacy Unix or other uh, systems, and this is the time to go to virtualization, to go to VMware, no risk, no more concerns about meeting your SLAs. The second piece is a lot of customers really want to get full consolidation. They see the copy services benefit and they love to consolidate production and non-production. And that's something that Epic's very conservative about, as they should be, but they're beginning to think about, is that possible? Now that we have an all-flash array that can really get that consistent performance all the time, no matter how many copies are running. Well, one of the things in health services always is you have to get uh, agreement that it from their vendor itself, or from the software vendor, that you can run it in certain configurations. Was that an easy thing to get, or what, um, what was it like at the moment? And you were pretty early, early too. Yeah, we were pretty early. We, we had a call with them and described what we wanted to do and why, and they said, we'll certainly support you. We would like for you to do uh, some extensive testing first. Was and this before or after they knew how to spell Extreme IO? <laughs> <laughs> I'm or not sure. They had, heard it. they had heard of it. Um, but, so our partners, uh, Vero and EMC, were at the table with us through that testing. Uh, Epic provided scripts and said, we'd like for you to run through these. My guys ran through them in a very structured manner where literally it was run through this script with these parameters, report back to us. Okay, now run through this script, these parameters, report, report back to us. We did that iteration. We went through it twice over the course of about three weeks. Phenomenal results. Uh, one of my guys, who was a little bit skeptical initially, uh, running through the test, came to me and actually asked could we put it in production before we had even agreed to because he was so blown away now. The latency never went up regardless of how we tuned the IOPS. And he could see that as a benefit for himself and his team. You know, th this is going to be a big deal for us. Right, right. It's really interesting when really know it's a significant technology shift when it not only provides you an improvement of performance of what you were doing, but really causes you to rethink, you know, hey, oh my gosh, what do, what do we do with this? And now, you know, should we be approaching things completely different? And I'm just curious in your internal app development or, you know, have you kind of started looking for, identified some opportunities that now we're going to think different based on this performance and capacity that we're really going to approach a problem in a very different way? We, we certainly have. There's a financial modeling app that we moved uh, to Epic on the production side uh, just recently. We found out that this, this group of people in finance is going to have to start doing a, a lot of modeling around outpatient care 
with all the changes in healthcare, they've got to you know have a, a way to model. It's got to be a, a different than the way they've worked. So to date, you know, one copy per year kind of thing. Now I'm going to move their test system to extreme so that I can take advantage of the snaps and allow them to do basically the same process that Epic does where they can have updates more often, uh, test their modeling processes more often before using the production data. So it's a, it, this product allowed us to be able to make that change for and, and this is a key example because it's, I think most customers are looking at Flash as about Flash is fast, Flash is about performance. And, and, and that's really just the beginning. And with Extreme IO's very unique architecture and the EMC solution around it, it's, it's not about performance, it's about consolidation. It's not about the infrastructure, it's about the application. And it's not about the workload, the individual workload, it's about the whole workflow and the business yeah. process agility. Yeah. So last question, what advice would you give to somebody in your position? What advice would you give uh, to them? If, if they are in the throes of a storage strategy decision, they need to think of it that way. They don't need to think of buying Flash just for speed and performance. Think about the potential to bring in all Flash, moving towards an all Flash data center, David, and, and, and making that you know, key and paramount and trying to focus workloads that way. Great. Great story. Andy, Jim, thanks for stopping by. We're getting the hook. we got to go. I, I love the Flash stories because I think, I think you did early some early studies about the adoption Absolutely, of Flash, and yeah. it seems to really yeah. be just going significantly well, it's, it's very faster, lonely when right? you're saying, this is what's going to happen, and all, of, all, the, all the disc guys are saying, over my dead body. But, uh, <laughs> Here we are. Here, Here we, we are. Here out, David Floyer. That's all I can say. And that will make that our last word. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. We're at EMC World 2015. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching.